In previous videos, I've lamented the shortage of serious science fiction and mystery stories written for kids these days. In this one, I address the opposite problem. The glut of children's fantasy stories over the past two decades inspired by the success of the Harry Potter books. The resulting deluge of new and heavily promoted fantasy books of very uneven quality has largely overshadowed older and often better fantasy classics for kids. I'll be recommending nine classic fantasy novels for middle grade readers, and I'll have more recommendations in future videos. Welcome to the Library Ladder. Fantasy stories for children have a long and celebrated history. Unlike fantasy aimed at adults, which gained widespread appeal and acceptance only in the past 50 years or so, fantasy stories were a common form of children's literature more than 150 years ago. Well-known authors such as Nathaniel Hawthorne, George MacDonald, Lewis Carroll, Frank Stockton, Charles Kingsley, Howard Pyle, Rudyard Kipling, Edith Nesbitt and Andrew Lang wrote many classic fantasies for kids at a time when adult fiction was heavily dominated by what might be termed domesticated realistic fiction, stories about interpersonal relationships and social class structures. In the Victorian era, fantasy was widely considered frivolous and suitable only for children, and often only because of its ability to camouflage the teaching of morals, values, and other life lessons making the instruction in those sometimes tedious subjects more palatable to youngsters. I think very highly of many of those early fantasy authors, but I'm not going to focus on them in this video. Instead, I want to talk briefly about some of the children's authors who followed after them. Authors other than Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, who wrote iconic fantasy books for kids from the 1930s to the 1970s, and who inspired much of the rapid rise in popularity of adult fantasy from the 1960s onward, as those child readers grew older. Several of the books I'll discuss share inspiration in the ancient Celtic and Arthurian legends of Britain. I'll start with two of them, written by English author T.H. White. The first is The Sword in the Stone, published in 1938. It's a retelling of the story of King Arthur's childhood, loosely based on the first part of Thomas Mallory's 15th century epic, The Mort d'Arthur, or The Death of Arthur. White expands on the earlier epic and puts the magical elements front and center in the story. Merlin the Magician becomes the catalyst for nearly everything that happens as he mentors young Arthur, known as Wart, and teaches him valuable lessons that prepare him to become a responsible adult and a wise king. But White adds some twists to the story, many involving Merlin's magical lessons that give it a lighthearted feel and make it a fun read. Although it was written for adults, it's suitable for mature middle grade readers who can handle complex sentences, subtle humor, and a plot that takes its time to unfold. White substantially revised the novel for inclusion in his 1958 omnibus, The Once and Future King. That later version is less recognizable to readers who are familiar with Walt Disney's 1963 animated adaptation, which was based on the original text from 1938. When published as a standalone novel, The Sword in the Stone typically is the 1938 version. In 1946, White wrote a novel for children titled Mistress Masham's Repose. It's a sequel of sorts to another work of classic literature, Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. In it, a ten-year-old orphan girl named Maria is the heir to a magnificent English estate that has fallen on hard times. She's looked after by a governess and a guardian who care more about her inheritance than about her. She discovers a colony of tiny people only a couple of inches high, living on an island in a pond on the estate's grounds. They're the descendants of Lilliputians who traveled to England in the wake of Gulliver's visit to their land centuries earlier. Together, Maria and her tiny friends strive to save the estate from the clutches of her governess and guardian. Like The Sword in the Stone, it's beautifully written and leisurely paced, which might not appeal to some young readers today who are accustomed to fast-paced action and plot movement with little descriptive detail. But for patient readers, it's a wonderful story. It very likely inspired Mary Norton to write The Borrowers a few years later, and Terry Pratchett to write his books The Carpet People and The Bromeliad Trilogy. Mistress Smashin's Repose was one of Pratchett's favorite books as a child. Another notable children's fantasy published in 1946 is The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Googe. 
it won the Carnegie Medal that year for the best British children's book. Like Mistress Masham's Repose, it centers on an orphan girl, also named Maria, who lives in a manor house with a governess and a guardian. Only in this case, they aren't trying to steal her inheritance. It's a completely original fairy tale set in the 1840s involving a manor house with secrets, ancient family feuds, ingenious animals, and a little bit of magic. It's an unabashedly old-fashioned story, reflecting the values of its Victorian-era setting. Some of those values are wonderful, and some are a little dated in their view of the proper roles and behavior of girls. Nevertheless, it's the kind of book that seems like it was written with nine- and ten-year-old readers in mind. The descriptions in it are detailed enough to provide plenty of fodder for young imaginations. This is a lovely book that was J.K. Rowling's favorite as a child, and she said that she borrowed elements of its narrative style for her Harry Potter novels. Next up is The Weird Stone of Brisingamen by English author Alan Garner, published in 1960. It tells the story of two modern-day children, a brother and sister, who are sent to live for a while in rural Cheshire near the Welsh border. They soon find themselves caught up in a harrowing adventure involving the sleeping knights of Arthurian legend, a magical jewel, ancient warlocks of the good and evil variety, and a menagerie of monsters drawn from Celtic and Nordic mythologies. This is both a traditional fantasy adventure tale and a horror story for kids. Garner's descriptions of menacing creatures and a lengthy, claustrophobic scene involving a desperate attempt to escape an underground network of caverns are masterfully done and might give sensitive children more than a few shivers. It's a relatively short read, but not an easy one. The use of unusual names, local slang, and a relative lack of detailed descriptions might require readers to work a little harder to fully understand what's happening in the book. Nevertheless, it's a very worthwhile read, particularly for kids or their parents who want an appreciation of the early major influences on the development of the children's fantasy genre. The Weird Stone of Brisingamen also is the first book in a trilogy known as the Tales of Alderley series. Books two and three are 1963's The Moon of Gomreth and 2012's Boneland. The three books are linked, but tell self-contained stories. Almost 90 now, Garner is still actively writing. His latest work, a fantasy novella for adults titled Treacle Walker, was a finalist for the 2022 Booker Prize, 62 years after his children's book debut. The final books I want to discuss are The Chronicles of Prydain by American author Lloyd Alexander. It's a five-volume series published between 1964 and 1968, comprising The Book of Three, The Black Cauldron, The Castle of Lear, Taran Wanderer, and The High King. Both The Black Cauldron and The High King won the Newbery Awards. This was one of my favorites as a kid, and having reread it recently for a middle grade book club discussion, I can say that it's a surprisingly rewarding read for adults as well. It's the story of Taran, a 15-year-old orphan who is adopted as an infant and raised on the farm of an ancient and kindly magician named Dalbin. Typical of a boy his age, Taran is frustrated by how stagnant his life is. He wants adventure and the opportunity to prove himself a hero as a way of escaping his status as an orphan without noble rank, whose sole title is Assistant Pig Keeper, tasked with the mundane job of looking after Dalbin's prize pig, Henwin. He doesn't realize that Henwin isn't an ordinary pig. She's actually an oracular pig able to foretell the future and provide wise guidance when called upon by Dalvin. And because of her magical abilities, dark forces in the service of Aran, the Death Lord of the Underworld, bring adventure and peril to Taran's doorstep as they seek to capture Henwin for Aran's use. Early on in the first book, Henwin goes missing, and Taran soon finds himself lost in the wilderness searching for her and at great risk from the evil forces gathering strength for an assault on the kingdom of Prydain, which, as a bit of historical trivia, was the medieval Welsh name given to Britain more than a thousand years ago. Over the course of the book, Taran follows the path of Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey, 
overcoming obstacles and gaining new friends and companions who assist him along the way in his quest to rescue Hinwin and to warn the High King of the impending assault on Pradain. In doing so, Taran also gains a better understanding of himself and his desire for honor and glory. The five books represent different stages in Taran's maturation as he ages from a callow youth to a young adult who inspires respect and admiration over the course of the series. I adore these books. Taran and his companions, including the teenaged princess Ailanwi, are wonderful role models. They're flawed enough that young readers can identify with their impetuous mistakes, but they all have solid values at their core that encourage readers to aspire to be like them. The Book of Three is the weakest of the books, in my opinion. The story is a little too episodic, and there are some notable plot holes and overly convenient plot resolutions, but it does a great job of establishing the characters and setting themes for the entire series, including friendship, loyalty, leadership, sacrifice, courage, and the wisdom that comes with growing up. The other four books in the series are stronger and tell tighter stories. All of them draw inspiration from Welsh and Celtic mythology found in the Mabinogion, the Welsh Triads, which is where the Book of Three gets its name, and the Legends of King Arthur. I can't praise these books highly enough. When they were first published, they were very popular and had an impact on the children's fantasy genre similar to the effect caused by J.K. Rowling's early Harry Potter books, spurring greater reader and author interest in the genre. In the 1960s and 70s, only Tolkien and C.S. Lewis are credited with having a greater impact on the growth of children's fantasy. Disney even adapted the first two books in the Prydain Chronicles for its 1985 animated feature film, The Black Cauldron. It's not a very faithful adaptation, though, and the books are much, much better. These are just a few of the early fantasy novels written for children that I think can be great introductions to the genre for young readers. In future videos, I'll recommend more classics for kids. What were your favorite fantasy books as a kid? And are there any recent middle-grade fantasy novels comparable to the classics that you'd like to recommend? Thanks for watching.